Okay guys, let's go ahead and do uh, a video on our regression analysis. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a little bit of data. Uh, and this is actually just built into ArcMander. Let's go to data, data in packages, and read data set from an attached package. And I'm going to open up data sets. And then if you scroll down all the way to the bottom, there is this trees data set. Um, if you want to know a little bit more data on this, you can click on help on selected data. And if you do, over in your R Studio in the help window, it'll pull it up. So this is the trees from data set. It tells you girth, height, and volume for black cherry trees. Give you some information so you actually know what type of data that you're working with. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. We're going to call this our trees, and it uploads it. Okay, so here is our basic scenario. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to try to predict the volume of a tree. Let me open up a little blank worksheet real quick. Okay. So we're going to try to predict the volume of a tree. And let's, let's blow up this just a little bit. So we want to, want to predict volume, volume of a tree. And we will use uh, the girth. So this is the diameter of the tree as a predictor. All right, so it's a pretty good um, oh, hypothesis that there is some relationship between the diameter of a tree and the volume of the tree. So what we want to do is we want to start off with our null hypothesis. And our null hypothesis is just simply going to be that beta 1, or the slope, is equal to 0, which means that there is no relationship between the volume and the girth of the tree. And the alternative hypothesis is simply that beta 1, and we're just going to say does not equal 0. All right, we don't know exactly what the relationship is. Um, but we're just going to say that it's not equal to 0, and let's start off with an alpha of equaling 0 0.05. Okay, great. So now we can dive in and actually try to do this thing. Uh, so if we look at our data set, we can see that we are dealing with all numerical data. And remember, regression analysis is a numerical by numerical analysis. So we're going to, the first thing let's do, let's make a scatter plot. So let's go models, oh sorry, graphs scatter plot. We're going to pick our x variable, which is our predictor variable, and our response is going to be the volume. And then we can go to options, uh, click on the least squares line, that actually will plot the regression line for us. And the x-axis I'm going to do as girth, and it's in inches. The y-axis is going to be in volume. And if you read over here in the help, it says that the volume is in cubic feet. So I'll do feet up three cubic feet graph title and we'll just call this tree volume and let's go ahead and click okay and here's our here's our plot so the first thing we want to do is just say does it look like a line is a decent um is a decent model for this data and the answer is yeah it doesn't look too bad it looks like our data is actually pretty well modeled by a linear line so that's check one that we need to do all right, so now let's go ahead and actually run the, the regression analysis. So statistics, fit models, linear regression. So the response is the volume. The predictor that we're using right now is the girth, or the explanatory variable. And we'll just click OK. And then we need to look at our diagnostics plots. I did some videos about like um, the theory behind them, but here let's actually go look at them. So we've got the graphs, and we want the basic diagnostic plots. Click on that, and here we go. So it gives us our residual plot and our normal QQ. So remember, the normal QQ plot, you basically want the lines to be, or the your data points to be on this line. And they, they do a pretty good job. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So let's go over and look at residuals. First thing that we want to say is that do we see any distinctive patterns, like any parabolas or any sinusoidal lines or anything like that? And the answer is no. Now you might say, well, what about this V-shaped thing? And you got to kind of ignore this red line here because it, it's being kind of thrown off by just a couple points. If you look at these three points, they're kind of weird. If you were to just kind of hover over those, ignore those points, and just look at the residual, uh, the residuals now, now it looks a lot better. It looks pretty much like a random cloud. So we don't really have a problem with any pattern in here. 
Um, continuing on with that thought, we really don't have any problem with co non-constant variance. Like, it's not, we don't see any real distinctive fanning. Uh, independence, uh, we're doing pretty good. Maybe a little bit of clumping, but nothing too bad to get worried about. Uh, the residuals are still centered about zero, and they're approximately normally distributed, with the data points being clustered about the zero line. Uh, and kind of occurring less and less as we get further and further out. So for our checks, we're actually doing just fine. Had we had a problem with like linearity or our, um, oh, the normality of the data or non-constant variance, then we would stop and say, hey, a linear regression is probably not the best way uh, to do our regression analysis. But for right now, we're doing just fine. So let's go ahead and actually let's take a look at our output from our residual or from our sorry regression analysis so this is our output what we're interested in is a couple of things so first things first we want to be able to um, we need our p-value or let's do f statistic we want a p-value and we want a decision oh and let's also get our equation all right, so our F statistic, if we look over here, it's just right here. It's this 419.4. Now, in the in a lot of the labs that, that I have, remember, I usually ask for four decimal places, and it only gives it out to one right here. Remember, we can always do the options, digits, equals, and then put in a big number. I'll put in like 20. Hit enter. Let me rerun the linear regression. Click OK. And now it gives me a ton more uh, decimals. So 20 was probably a little bit too much, but we'll, we'll go with it for right now. All right, so our F statistic, we can just copy this guy right here. Copy and paste. And then we got to round this thing correctly. Three. And our P value, when you get something like this to four decimal places, it's 0 0.0000. Uh, oh, we also should put in our r squared value. R squared. Okay, and our r squared is equal to, well, just 93.53. Okay. So here we go. Uh, let's get this. I'll fix that real quick. Let's go ahead and increase the number of decimal places there to 4. There we go. Okay. So now let's talk about our decision. So we still are talking about, is our p-value less than alpha? And our p-value is less than alpha, so we would reject the null. And our equation. Okay, so we've got y hat. It's our prediction of what y is, is equal to. So we've got the y-intercept. So I'm going to copy this guy real quick. Copy and paste. So that's our y-intercept. Now, most of the time, our y-intercept, we're actually not really interested in. It just helps us locate the line correctly. And let's go ahead and then put in the girth of the tree. We'll copy this guy and paste it and round that guy up. Sorry. Round that guy up. Okay. And times x. Okay. So now... We've, we've got our basic stuff done. We've got our F statistic, our p-value, our r-squared, our decision, and our equation. And now we need to talk a little bit about this. So remember, p-value lets us know that, hey, we really, there is a significant slope here. There is a relationship. And r-squared lets us know the percent of the variability in the data that is described away by the model. We want that to be big. Like a good model, like bare minimum, really is like 80%. If we can get that higher it is generally better. Okay, so let's write a conclusion now. So we can say that we collected sufficient evidence at the alpha level of 0 0.05, sorry, 0 0.05 to conclude, or sorry, to reject the claim that there is no true relationship between uh, the girth 
of the tree and its volume. And instead, conclude that there is, in fact, a relationship, I'll say a true relationship, between the two variables. Two variables for what type of trees are these? Black cherry trees. Okay. Okay, so there's our conclusion. Remember, our conclusion is only talking about our null and our alternative hypothesis. Okay, so we can now put in a quick statement on our um, on our R squared value. Or let's uh, let's start off with the with the equation. So we can say that our model predicts that for every one inch increase in the girth of the cherry tree that there will be a uh, five points uh, all around it here zero seven foot cubed increase in its volume that's how we interpret this equation we need to interpret the slope for every one inch increase in the girth of the cherry tree there will be a 5.07 increase or cubic foot increase in its volume all right so we can we can also talk a little bit about the r squared value so this can be deemed as a good model as and we can say we can say like uh, we'll put in 90 uh, we'll put in 94 percent of the variability in the data is explained by the model that's great uh, that that's a lot of the variability that is being explained by the model so the last thing that we want to do is our confidence interval and we come over here and we're like there actually really isn't a confidence interval but there's an easy way to get it all you have to do is go up to models and click on confidence intervals and we got to click at we can say what the confidence level we want and we can just leave it at 0.95 because our alpha was 0.05 we can click OK and here we go we've got our uh, our coefficients or not our coefficients but our upper and lower bounds of a confidence interval this is our lower bound and this is our upper bound okay so here's what what we can do so we can say that we are 95 percent confident that the true slope or yeah we'll do the, the true slope slope between or we'll do true relationship between the girth and volume of the tree is somewhere between and we can do this four points like five six and five point five seven and we can do feet cubed and this is feet cubed per inch per inch increase in the volume Okay, and there it is. From top to bottom, we have now done our hypothesis testing with regression analysis, talking about the relationship between two variables. We did the checks to see if we could even do the test. We collected uh, our data, and we were able to determine that it was uh, significant. 
then we were able to talk about how good our model is. We were able to describe actually the model and interpret the slope and also give a confidence interval. That's it from top to bottom. Good luck on your homework.